Hello the internet. If you're watching this video then chances are you're considering going to Mexico. What I'm going to deal with over the next few minutes are three main areas that were certainly concerning me before I undertook the trip. And the three areas are first of all is Mexico safe which tends to be a very hot topic of uh, conversation on the internet and hopefully I can uh, shed some light on that. The second topic is about filming in Mexico and you know what were the pros and cons of flying a drone in Mexico and some of those uh, answers you might find applicable to flying a drone in any part of the world given the kind of terrain that uh, I was filming in. So that's number two, that's about filming in Mexico, not just with a drone, but I was also, also using a Panasonic GH5. And the third and possibly most bizarre part of this video, only a very short piece at the end, is about how not to get scammed at uh, Cancun Airport. It's worth just knowing that and uh, I'll talk about that at the end. So these are just my personal thoughts backed up by my experience of being in the country. So is Mexico safe? And I think by and large my experience would point to the fact the answer is yes. We started in Mexico City, so that's the map from the uh, Explore website, and we travelled in an easterly direction, got to Samerido Canyon, and arrived in San Cristobal de las Casas and then traveled in a slightly northerly eastern direction uh, through Chiapas, through Campeche uh, and arriving as you can see to Playa del Carmen. Because we were traveling in a group we had a driver who does this kind of thing day in day out very safely and we also had a tour leader whose name was Anna. Now she was absolutely brilliant in the sense she knows the country she lives there she knows the customs she knows how to deal with any situation that comes up with Spanish not being your first language you really want someone there who knows how to handle a situation and I'll give you an example we had to take a fairly sizable detour because there was a roadblock, because there was a protest going on and Anna got word about this and so we had to take a two hour detour to get to Campeche from uh, Palenque. Now, and we saw some amazing scenery. We actually got up a little bit earlier. Um, we saw um, the, the very first few shots in the video are of the, the sun rising over the water uh, as we travel through a state called uh, Tabasco believe it or not well I don't, I don't think no shots are from Tabasco but we were going via Tabasco and that was that was kind of like a bonus really in a way it wasn't uh, planned and um, I really loved it having a driver having a tour leader that got this information meant that we weren't sat in a roadblock waiting all day for the traffic to clear because of a protest now what does happen when you're traveling around you will get sort of stopped by the police the federal police Anna mentioned to us one very interesting thing about the police they are slightly corrupt and the reason they're corrupt is because they need to make a little bit of extra cash because their salary is almost minimum wage that's what I've been told I don't I, I'm not sure it's the same for all the police over there uh, please take everything I say with a pinch of salt but that's the information we got so when we were stopped by the police the first thing Anna said to our driver was put the poppers down on the car so the car was locked police asked Anna oh where are you going you know and she said we're on a tour and he said who's in the car and she said many different people from many nationalities and just left it like that and because Anna knew how to handle the police she you know there was no way the police were going to come in and look in the car and start rooting around for stuff she just sort of made it clear to them they weren't coming in and I think had I been in that situation or with someone who d didn't know the lay of the land 
they might have said, oh, you know, we've got to check your bags and do all that kind of thing. And you'd have just opened the, ba- the boot. They'd have said that, you know, you need to pay $20 or whatever to carry on. And we'd have just paid it. We're not talking about heavy sort of fines or anything like that, but just little bribes that the police, that's what the police are looking for. We didn't see any trouble anywhere. We didn't see any sort of like altercations, any fights, nothing like that at all. It was very calm. It was very peaceful. And I just felt totally relaxed. I'd never flown my drone over water. And what a stunning location that was. I wasn't thinking so much about the shots. I was really just thinking about getting the thing back intact and not uh, letting it go in the water because the water spray from from the fountain com- comes everywhere you know it's just it's just moisture in the air and you don't want the drone to get sort of like uh, pulled into a current of air just over the actual spray so I was being very very conservative with some of the shots I took there but uh, as you can see the results are very very good and it's a beautiful location we could have spent more time there but that was that day that I mentioned where we were really short on time because we had to make a massive detour now after that waterfall we went to the really tall 90 foot waterfall and I had so much trouble trying to get the drone back it was a very clear path to get the drone to the waterfall but getting it back was really difficult and even hitting the home button it was a struggling because of the number of trees around what happens when you hit the home button on the dji mavic pro is that it ascends to an altitude of about 200 feet so it can then pick its way back to you um, and it had to literally because it goes right up in the air and then starts to find a way back it has to very very carefully navigate its way through loads of tree branches to come back and when you, you know you're looking on the monitor on the your mobile phone the, the lights on the screen I, I can't see a thing of what I'm doing and I had Anna as a spotter <laughs> telling me no 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 it's really close to a tree tree no d- stop don't go that way and of course by this stage I didn't know I couldn't see the drone because there were so many trees around so you've got to the question I asked myself was if I took the drone was I prepared to part company with the drone knowing that I would lose all the files on the on the card and I thought well if I keep the drone in sight then I'll be okay if I keep it in eyesight now I thought I was going to be able to do that but I, I literally as it was coming back to me I lost sight of it and it was really a panicky moment and at, right at the end we we it went into the densest thickest uh, undergrowth I nearly lost the thing because I, I couldn't see where it had landed because it, it landed near us and the battery was running out and it was very very stressful so it did come back now the final time I this relates to what I was saying earlier on about the police. The final time I flew it was in the city of Campeche, which was my favorite Mexican city. There's this amazing cathedral there with twin towers. And I was flying at seven in the morning, hardly anyone around. And as you can see, the light was fantastic. It was absolutely amazing. One of the things about uh, drone footage is you're flying the drone. So you're looking at where the drone is in relation to all the other objects around it. But you're also trying to make a beautiful picture that you want to be nice and smooth in, in all its movement. And of course, I was so concentrating on the screen Uh, and trying to make this beautiful sort of slow movement around the cathedral that um, the drone sensor didn't see the small part of a branch. It flew too close to the leaves. Basically, the the propellers got sort of like uh, tangled up and it came down to earth with an absolute bump and uh, it got broken, unfortunately. One of its arms got broken and that was the end of um, using the drone. So I got the drone back. I mean, fortunately... You know, this is another thing you've got to consider. You're in a foreign country, you're on a trip with other people, you're on a time time frame. If that drone had got stuck in that tree, that was a massive tree, would I have been able to get it back? Fortunately, it came all the way down to earth and I managed to get it. 
So while I'd been filming, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed I was getting some attention from the local police. And they were sort of semi-stalking me in this little smart car. And the really bizarre thing at the end of it was that after the drone had come crashing down, I could hear them uh, having a conversation with each other in English. And the conversation went along the lines of, well, sorry, you're going to have to pay because that's how it is. And obviously they were hoping that I would overhear. Anyway, I picked up the drone and just turned on my heel and I just walked back to the hotel. So I don't know whether or not they didn't follow me. But again, it was that kind of, you know, kind of pay us a bribe type thing. Um, And uh, I look back on it and I smile now. So the other thing worth mentioning was I took the GH5, the Panasonic GH5, which I've been talking about in another video. And I was looking forward to the image stabilization on the five axis sensor. And I've got to say, the more I use that stabilization, the more I think I'm going to go over to using one of those uh, sort of three axis gimbal things because it, it's just not good enough in camera. It looks really sort of electronically bizarre, you know, the way perspective shifts on some areas around the sensor. It, it's, it's not a very good look. And the other thing I'm, I've am i talked about other lenses that I used. I used the Speedmaster 25 millimeter lens, which I was raving about in my last video to Sri Lanka, which is probably, I'll leave a little link in the description. And I am looking at that lens and seeing it's not that good when the lens is wide open. If the lens is at f2 or f2.8, the edges start to look really, really soft. And you've got to be using that lens at about f4, f5.6. And then you kind of like lose the magic of, of of using, you know, getting depth of field in micro four thirds. Getting depth of field in micro four thirds is a, an effort in itself. And as soon as you open up a lens, you start to get it. But if you start getting soft edges, it's it's not very good. So just bear that in mind. If you're thinking of getting that Speedmaster 25 millimeter, it's OK. But... Uh, at wide open apertures, it's pretty, pretty soft. In general, the footage from the GH5 was pretty good. I was using it at 150 megs and I was shooting at 60 frames. So really nice, nice sort of over cranked slow motion shots that looked lovely. Um, and I was pretty pleased. And by the way, there's no footage of the police and there's no footage of um, some of the local people. One of the things about you, if you shoot the if you shoot the police, if you take footage of the police, you know, then they will want money. So that was explained to us. And certain people in Mexico, certain indigenous folk, don't like having their picture taken. So you've got to be a little bit respectful of that. Not everybody, not everybody, but um, again, Anna was able to give us that that advice. So uh, that's it for filming. That's it for safety. The final thing I wanted to mention. We arrived in Mexico in Cancun Airport because we needed to uh, transfer to a local. Uh, so if you look at Cancun, it's on the far east, eastern side. And that's where we arrived into Mexico. And we needed to transfer to a local uh, flight to get to Mexico City for two more hours uh, plane we did three planes that day three planes can you believe it I was I was like a zombie by the end of the day but anyway back to Cancun so Cancun is one of these really I've never known an airport like it it's sort of split up by geography so the local terminal isn't connected to the um, international terminal and there is a bus that goes between the two once an hour so if you're in a hurry to get to your local flight, as we were, you have to jump into a taxi. So we traveled a distance of about one mile, if that, and we paid 400 Mexican pesos, which is about 16 quid, 16 pounds for a miles taxi. If they offer you 400 pesos for a taxi, at least get it down to 300. I mean, I know the taxi drivers have to make some money, I know that they are doing a worthwhile service, but 
you know they're only going to drive you three quarters of a mile from one terminal to another generally if you're in uh, Gatwick or Heathrow you walk between terminals but uh, can can know you get a taxi and just watch out for that right well thank you very much for watching i hope that's helped you if you've got any questions please leave them in the comment box please subscribe i'm leaving a little subscribe logo up um, my next video is going to be about filming in cuba that's it for this video thanks so much cheers bye bye <laughs>